Hello and welcome to today's video. Today we have an Invin 103 Phantom Gaming Black Edition case that we're going to review, of course. But before we go into deep and we go and talk about the case and all the details, uh, let me just mention that this case will be used for my next project. I'm going to do a custom build with uh, Invin, of course. Uh, we have ASRock and we have Team Group and I'm going to add EK water blocks as well. Now, this uh, has already been explained in my past video. Today, we're going to focus on the case in Win 103. Now, as you can see, it's a completely different case that I did review so far. It has a different graphics on it. It's not plain black or plain white or whatever color cases usually come in, but you have this kind of gray and red lines with the Phantom Gaming logo, and here on the front you have also the gray and red lines. On top you have small parts here at the back, and that's about it. Now when it comes to the chassis, as I said, it's completely different. As you can see, you don't have an intake right here. You don't have an outtake over here because it's a different layout inside. And let me show you. So you have a side tempered glass panel, which is, just look at this. It's very easy to remove it. You just pop out these two holders and you just slide it out like this, take it out and that's it. As you can see, it's a bit tinted tempered glass. So it kind of covers the interior, but we'll see when we turn on some lights and when we place a build. Now here you have two 3.5 inch hard drive brackets. Honestly, I would really prefer if they were at the back, so it kind of covers the whole top, but that's a different story. Now here we go. The bottom part can contain a radiator up to 360 and with three fans 120. You also have a dust filter, which you do have to kind of lean the case backward to access it. And this is it. You can place a 120 here at the back and you can place two 120 millimeter at the side next to your motherboard. Also, you can place a radiator here 240 or you can place 120 at the rear as well. One thing that I can notice just by checking it out like this is you have only four standoffs already placed and you do need to add six more. When we go to the back side of the case you have two thumb screws that hold back on the rear side of the case. You just untie them and pop out the back side. It has a honeycomb ventilation at the back, which in Win design, and I already said that in in Win uh, A1 Plus case, which looks really cool. When it comes to backside clearance and the power supply shroud, the top power supply shroud, because it's on top, you have loads of clearance for your cables and for your power supply up to 32 and a half centimeters. So that's quite a lot of space for cable management and for power supply because if you place your cables up on top and you reroute them directly to your components you don't have to uh, take care of the mess on the back side you have two ssd brackets 2.5 inch and they're very easily removable with the thumb screw first you do have to untie them with a screwdriver and basically after that you can just use your hands. Uh, nicely rerouting the cables directly to your motherboard, to your uh, SATA and you have about two centimeters clearance from the motherboard stand to the back panel of the case. I think it's even more because I calculated the first rim here that the backside uh, leans on, but when you take into consideration the outer rim, then you have 2.5 centimeters of clear space. This right here is the mounting for your fans or your radiator and fans. And the interesting part is you can easily remove it. You just have to remove two screws right here at the top which of course only releases the top side then you have one more right here at the bottom and you slide it up it makes a sound because you crashed it a bit just kidding and you release the whole panel that you could practically manage everything right here now when we're talking about temperatures i think it's time to do some thermals on cpu and gpu and see what we can get now, as you might have seen, the case is a completely different story than usual cases. It has a power supply uh, right on top. You have a side and 
well, outtake basically, uh, preferably four radiators, which you've seen I placed a 240 radiator uh, with the uh, complete AIO. Uh, and you have a bottom intake, which is also a completely different story. Now, the case is pretty interesting, I do have to say, and you do have two 3.5 inch uh, hard drive brackets, you have at the back uh, two 2.5 inch SSD brackets, and on the hard drive brackets you can actually manage a 2.5 inch SSD on both of them, so there's additional SSD brackets. Uh, it's only a shame that you can't place an SSD, for instance, like I have have the team groups uh, Phantom Gaming Delta uh, RGB SSD it would look really nice if it's if it was somewhere visible but nevertheless now the testing concluded something really interesting on heavy loader, so you already seen other tests, I've been using it for about 30 plus minutes, it's somewhere around that. With 100% load on Intel Core i9-9900K, we got 63 Celsius after 30 minutes, so it was going from 55, 56 and then going up to 63. Now when it comes to gaming, I played on high details, PUBG 100% load on the GPU had 72 degrees and the CPU was around 27% load with 49 Celsius degrees. In Tomb Raider we had an average, well, 72 FPS but that doesn't matter here. Uh, the GPU was on 100%, 72 degrees and the processor load was 30%, 46 Celsius degrees. Now when it comes to Witcher 3 and on ultra settings we had 100% on the GPU which actually had lower temperatures than in Tomb Raider and PUBG, it was 69 and the uh, CPU was going up to 20% with 46 Celsius degrees. Now I would say this is really interesting temperatures because I do have to admit we did place a 240 radiator right here which cools the processor and we have three intake fans, one that is basically pushing the air through the radiator, well to the fans of the radiator and to pulling uh, the air directly to the graphic card and one as an outtake just if you have an extra hot air circling in the case, which is a really good uh, combination for airflow and for your combination when it comes to fans. Now this is basically, this was Invin 103 Phantom Gaming uh, Black Edition case. Uh, it's really nice with all the Phantom Gaming lines here on front, here on top and on the tempered glass. You also have this InVin logo here which is addressable RGB and it does look really impressive. Altogether a really nice case and if you place it with all the Phantom Gaming uh, parts you get really cool stuff. Really cool build and I mean I am going to mod modify it but still you don't have to get anything special. Also adding InVin series loop fans six of them, three as an intake, two on the radiator, and one as the outtake. Uh, you do get a nice RGB madness, or you can go with a single color like I did in a couple of pictures. You have a complete white build with the Phantom Gaming red, gray, black. It really does fit really nicely. So guys, I'll put the links below for the Inwin 103 Phantom Gaming Black Edition case so you can check it out and I'll put the links for Series Loop fans if you really like, I mean they really look nice with all the uh, lights, the light is really cool and they're really quiet so yeah that's kind of positive thing definitely if you're interested in something like that. So guys thank you for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe, check the links if you're interested and see you in the next one. Bye bye!